And sign yeah, up. sign up. Sign join up. Our join crew. our team. It's really, join really fun. Our team. Let's go. We're, huh. the, we're the oil crew. What can I say? Huh. She set you up, Judy. She set us all. Hey guys, it's Madison Harnish, back in my blue kitchen for another crazy video. And before we get into this video, I do have some really bad news. My husband and I just bought a house. Well, that's good news, but because of that, our blue kitchen will be disappearing soon. We were thinking about painting our new kitchen blue, but the people that have the house before us, did such a great job with the kitchen, so we didn't want to ruin it. So if you have any ideas for filming spots, should I go in the kitchen, should I create a filming setup, let me know. And if you have any phrases that you think I should use instead of welcome back to my blue kitchen, leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear all of your suggestions. I'm sure you guys have much better ideas than I do about what to say, so yeah. That's, that's, that's that. <laughs> we all have our favorite childhood movies that we remember watching. And for me, one of those movies was Spy Kids. As a kid, I loved spy movies, like loved them. I just thought it was such a cool idea to be one of those cool spies with all the awesome gadgets and moves. So as you could guess, Spy Kids was one of my favorite movies. And of course, I identified the most with Carmen from Spy Kids. I thought she was so cool and I definitely wanted to be her. So you can imagine my dismay when some of my subs sent me information on where Alexa Vega is now. Alexa Vega was the actress that played Carmen in Spy Kids, but now Alexa Vega is one of the biggest reps for Young Living. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. But before we do, if you enjoy deep dives into talks about scams, unethical business practices, and crazy stuff going on on the internet, then don't forget to subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up. And well, let's get into the video. If you don't know what Young Living is, Young Living is a multi-level marketing company. I did an entire video on Young Living and the shady past of their founder. Gary talked his wife at the time, Donna Young, into giving birth in a hot tub at his clinic. He then held the little girl underwater for an hour until she died. Young Living solely sells essential oils and they sell them through distributors who can be anyone and require no certifications or really any training process. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> in reality, most people in MLMs lose money unless you have a big audience to recruit aka foreshadowing. <laughs> On top of that, while there may be some very small documented and well-studied benefits to essential oils, it is nowhere near the claims that Young Living reps make about essential oils. That's why overall it's my opinion and many others that Young Living is not a good company. So you can imagine my dismay when I realized that Alexa Vega had become basically one giant Young Living advertisement. So let's take a look at that. I want to clarify before this video, I don't think that Alexa Vega and her husband have bad intentions. Her and her husband are very charismatic people and after all the videos and content that I've watched from them, I can tell that they seem to want to put out positivity and do good in the world. I just believe that with their influence, they can do some amazing things, but I don't think promoting an MLM where most people will lose money is one of those things. It feels like they may have lost sight that this business relationship that they have with Young Living is damaging others who they are recruiting and encouraging to spend money in dangerous ways. It all started when a subscriber sent me a message with this video in it about Alexa Vega and how she's selling Young Living. So let's watch that. First off, I do want to say Alexa Vega looks stunning. She's 
aged so beautifully not that she's old but you know what i mean from spy kids to now stunning beautiful guys hello okay i wanted to do a super quick kind of diy and it is making your own moisturizer at home already using a moisturizer that you have just enhancing your moisturizer so first you are gonna need an amber glass jar i almost dropped it that was really scary okay i use a one ounce so as you can see or if you couldn't tell all the essential oils in front of her are all Young Living essential oils. Those just happen to be all of her favorites. So interesting. It's amber glass jar. I bought it online. Super cheap. Love that. Who doesn't love a, like a little, nice little cheap product? And basically, um, I've already made this month's um, little face cream, but what it looks like in there what i do is i take an spf obviously i'm not a dermatologist but i will say i've had a ton of skin issues throughout my life i have really sensitive skin it gets irritated really easily and i've struggled with acne i do know that a lot of dermatologists do not recommend mixing your own skincare you don't know how they're going to interact you don't know what levels to put of each you really don't know essential oil is considered a fragrance in skincare and fragrance can be irritating to the skin and i just know for me when i've had essential oils in my skincare in the past it's irritated it so much once again that can be different for everyone overall this is just not a good thing to encourage a ton of people to do i would be in the sun all day long if it was up to me and um i would end up with a ton of wrinkles so this will help you from aging so make sure you put your spf on your face so i basically scored a whole bunch of this into here now if you're using a natural sunblock like this one it um, can tend to be thicker. So the oils actually end up thinning it out. So that way it's not so pasty on your face. The oils thin it out, that just ends up, <laughs> if the oils thin it out, that might thin out the effectiveness of the sunscreen. And it turns into an everyday moisturizer as opposed to kind of like just the beach uh, sunblockness that I don't know if that makes sense. Basically, it ends up being a really good moisturizer. That's what I'm trying to say here. So I have a plethora of oils that you can use to enhance your moisturizers that you already have at home. She has seven oils in front of her. And just from what I know from Young Living Prices, that's at least $70 right there of essential oils. What I would say is if you want, you can use all of them. You can use like a couple drops of each and add them in there, but that's not what I do. I like to test it out. I like to see how my face responds to the oils that I'm putting onto it. Um, so maybe this lasts me uh, about a month. So once you put everything in there, pick maybe three oils, do a combo of three oils and do about 10 drops of each. So you're gonna end up with 30 drops in this jar, but you do a really, really good mix. 30 drops of essential oils. If there are any skincare experts out there, I'd love to know information on essential oils and skincare. 30 drops of essential oils in one ounce jar seems like a huge amount of essential oils, but let me know if I'm wrong on that. So yeah, that is how I was introduced to Alexa Vega's Instagram. And let's just say it, it goes downhill from here. <laughs> Alexa Vega's Instagram, Vega Alexa, has 1.7 million followers. 1.7 million. That's her main Instagram. And then she recently also created an Instagram solely dedicated to essential oils called Oil Inspired that already has 12.5 thousand followers. So just think about that in terms of span of influence and how many people she can recruit under her very easily it's a lot lux and lows really exemplify the whole point of why mlms can be so dangerous mlms really only work for the people who already have 
a large following or a large span of influence. They can recruit a lot of people under them very quickly and capitalize off of that. Unfortunately, this type of structure creates a scenario where those on top with a large influence or a large following get even richer while those that they recruit get even poorer. How is this not a pyramid scheme? And I just think it's kind of sad that she has such a great influence and she uses it to spread the message of an MLM that has over time exhibited really predatory business practices and just has an awful founder. The other thing that bothers me a lot, and I spent a ton of time researching Alexa Vega and her relationship with Young Living, and nowhere does she ever clearly state her relationship or affiliation with Young Living. And the reason why I say that is I have an inkling that it's more than just that she's a Young Living distributor. I kind of feel like they have more of a relationship there. I want to clarify further, when I say that Alexa and Carlos aren't fully disclosing their relationship with Young Living, there's no clarification if they're just Young Living members or if they're affiliated in other ways, like Young Living is sponsoring and paying for posts. If they're Young Living members, and on top of that, Young Living is paying for ads through them or sponsoring them, that kind of changes the bias. They're not becoming Young Living members off of their own passion for Young Living products or their own fruition, but instead, they have a bias towards that company since they sponsor them on top of everything. Additionally, they're creating the illusion that any Young Living member can be like them when in reality, they have a special working relationship where Young Living is providing them additional income for sponsorships, ads, etc. So it feels like the nature of the business relationship isn't being fully disclosed and can be kind of misleading for their followers. They may think that because they're members of Young Living or their distributors, they don't really have to disclose their relationship, but I would argue that's not the case at all, especially if you have 1.7 million followers who are listening to your advice and what you have to say. They deserve a right to know whether or not that information is biased and how it's biased aka the specific nature of your business relationship. I I'm gonna just say that. So let's look at some more posts that Alexa Vega has with Young Living and let's see what those are like. She has a photo of nutmeg essential oil on what looks like carrot cupcakes. And she says, "'Tis the season to bake and eat delicious yummies. Spice up your favorite yummies with a little at Young Living's nutmeg vitality. Hashtag ad, there we go, that's good. So this was specifically an ad for Young Living. It has a sweet, spicy taste that gives me all the holiday feels. So sweet, spicy taste means she's consuming essential oils, which a lot of experts do not recommend no matter how diluted it is, a lot of people do not recommend to consume essential oils. Health information for Western Australians published an article where they talk about essential oils. I would say it's a fairly trustworthy source, and this is what they have to say. What are the dangers of essential oils? There have been claims made by companies producing essential oil products and their distributors that essential oils are natural and therefore safe to consume. Essential oils are not safe to consume and can cause significant poisoning even if small amounts are ingested. So just because an essential oil is sold with more dilution, that does not mean that it's safe to consume and that you should consume it. The Western Australian Poisons Information Center has recorded an increase in poisonings as a result of essential oil ingestions in children. It is therefore important that essential oils are stored securely in a child-resistant container and kept out of reach of children. And you should especially probably not be feeding your children essential oils, but I digress. The use of undiluted essential oils on sensitive skin or in the nostrils can irritate or burn. Susceptible people may also develop an allergic reaction and a skin rash 
which unfortunately I am one of those susceptible people. <laughs> what are the symptoms of toxicity? Essential oils are rapidly absorbed orally and symptoms can develop as quickly as 30 minutes after ingestion. The severity of toxicity is dependent on the type of oil and the amount ingested. Children are particularly susceptible. As little as two milliliters, less than half a teaspoon of eucalyptus oil can cause significant poisoning in an infant. Symptoms of toxicity include drowsiness, slow, shallow breathing, seizures, persistent cough, gagging, choking, shortness of breath. You do you. If you feel like it's fine and you, you know, you have every right to do with your body what you want, but a lot of people do not recommend to consume essential oils. So it's a little weird to recommend it, but okay. I like to think of these desserts as guilt-free because of all the goodness Nutmeg Vitality offers. Immune support, healthy cognitive function, powerful antioxidants, and more. A little goes a long way. Now start cooking. How do you use your Young Living Nutmeg Vitality? Hashtag Young Living, hashtag YLeo. It's kind of funny how Young Living says they don't support health claims or medical claims about their product, yet in this specific ad for Young Living, which they obviously approved to be posted, there are a lot of claims about what their nutmeg essential oil does. That's kind of funny. Hmm. So I guess what Young Living really means is they only don't approve of something if someone gets caught or in trouble for saying that thing. Also just on top of that all, I don't know if you guys have ever like accidentally tasted essential oils or tried it, but I actually hate the taste of essential oils. They've never tasted good to me. They're always way too intense and overpowering and I've never enjoyed it. Like it's not delicious if I think of like, mmm, yummy carrot cake. Nutmeg essential oil does not, is not a part of that picture. And of course, here is a post by Alexa Vega's oil Instagram where she has a photo of her child with an essential oil in his hand. And the caption says, Sniffleese, holy moly guys, sorry for the silence. We have been traveling mucho lately. Yes, we went Spanglish for a moment, but so happy to be jumping back on here. Lots of oils being put to good use these last couple of weeks. And, drumroll please, wanted to put the spotlight on Sniffleese. Between the airplane rides, climate changes, drying heaters, and sleep patterns disrupted, the kids eventually became little mucus bombs. Poor little pumpkins. So let's talk oil. What I love about Sniffleese, it comes pre-diluted and ready for use, naturally soothes when inhaled, promotes feelings of wellness, can be applied straight to chest, one to two drops or diffused, and it smells amazing. If you're looking for a good easing oil for your little ones, make sure to keep this one in your cabinet. Hashtag essential oils, hashtag young living, hashtag kid sense, hashtag Sniffleese. And once again, this post does not disclose that they have a working relationship with Young Living. She has her child touching the essential oils and then is talking about a giveaway. It says, giveaway, I cannot tell you guys how thankful I am for at Young Living. If you follow us, you know we travel with our oils wherever we go. But we have also even made a fun game with Ocean when using any of the kids' sense oils. He loves counting them and telling us all their colors, and we love their calming, soothing, relieving effects after applying them. I know other oil mamas totally get it, but if you are new, you can't truly know how awesome they are until you try them. There is a reason we are obsessed. There are so many chemicals in everything nowadays. The reason why there's so many chemicals in everything nowadays is because everything is a chemical. Every single thing. Essential oils are a chemical. Everything's a chemical. But yes, there are so many chemicals in everything nowadays. If I can use something that is safe, has amazing benefits, and is all natural, especially with my kid, I am all in. We want you to experience the awesomeness of young living, so we are doing a giveaway. Comment below why you want me to send you Kids Sense, and I will pick a winner. XOXOXO. XO, XO. 
hashtag why Leo, hashtag ad. Here's another post. <laughs> Here's another post where she says she has a, a photo of essential oils and a water bottle. And then a photo where she's pouring essential oils into her water. And the caption says, support your wellness and immune system. Just let that soak in. A few tips for when I'm on the go with so many benefits. Orange Vitality can provide immune support and cleanses the digestive system. Peppermint Vitality supports gastrointestinal system comfort and enhances healthy gut function. A drop or two of each in your water bottle and you are good to go. Hashtag why Leo, hashtag young living, hashtag sponsor. Find it really interesting that young living is supporting a lot of these claims and sponsoring someone who's making a lot of health claims. You know, it's one thing when young living reps who have maybe a few Facebook followers make outrageous claims, but when someone with millions of followers is telling them about how orange oil and peppermint oil cleanses the digestive system and supports the gastrointestinal system, like, I'm sorry, I don't know if this is a lot to ask, but if you're gonna make claims like that and you have a large following, can you like at least provide some more information as to why that's a thing, what studies were found by that, how that works even? Like, how does orange oil cleanse your digestive system? So on Alexa Vega's oil inspired page, which is her page entirely dedicated not to just oils, but to young living. In some of her captions, she says, you can use whatever oil you want. I just use young living. But your page is entirely dedicated to young living products. So you can't say it's just an oil page. You're being paid to sponsor and advertise young living and are entirely talking about their products. So you see how that might be a little bit biased? It's one thing to have a passion for something, and it's a completely different thing to not disclose your working relationship with a business or to disguise that working relationship as a passion. It's a thing I have a problem with not only with Alexa Vega, but a ton of other influencers that are doing this nowadays. But I do want to point it out with Alexa because she's not only misleading her followers, but misleading them into joining an MLM that will take money from them and overall lead them down a bad path. If it was solely an essential oil obsession, there are so many great essential oil companies that maintain great ingredients that don't exhibit predatory business practices with such a horrible and horrific past as Gary D. Young has. But here's her information on opening and talking about Young Living's starter kit. What is up you guys? My name is Alexa Penavega. If you don't know me, I am an actress, I am a mama, I am married to the coolest husband ever, his name is Carlos, and I am obsessed with essential oils. A lot of you have been asking about my obsession with essential oils, how I got into it, how you can get into it, and where to even start. It's a whole new world, and once you dive in, it can get really, really overwhelming very quickly. I just want to talk to you about what I did and where I'm at now. I would highly suggest getting a premium starter kit. Bam! That's what I did. I happen to use Young Living Essential Oils. I really, really love them. The company's incredible. She just happens to use it, not like Young Living continually sponsors her, advertises her posts. You see how this is really misleading and kind of frustrating? Or is that just me? I don't know. There's not really much information that she shares about when to not use essential oils and how to be careful when using them. The one time she mentions it is with the consumption of essential oils and how the Young Living Vitality line is more easily consumed. 
There is a difference between the white label bottles and the solid color. These are called Vitality Essential Oils and these can actually be ingested. And it's put in a completely different bottle. It's called Vitality Line. So you know that these are ingested. Some oils should not be ingested. It can be very, very dangerous. So pay attention to these labels and that'll help guide you. Which is kind of downplaying the negative effects of consuming essential oils by a lot. She also does a Q&A video, so let's watch that. Disclaimer before that video, I'm gonna try my best to blur out her child's face. Let's see if I can succeed in that. I'm still kind of new to editing. We're so concerned about, you know, the cars that we drive. We do a bunch of research on that or, you know, obviously it's important, but like where our kids go to school and, and you know, we'll research those kind of things, but we won't research what we put on our bodies or what we put into our bodies. A lot of doctors research that. And that's why we talk to our doctor and we see our doctor because they have years and years of research that we do not have. And then of course you have to listen to your body and see how it reacts to things. She constantly says, do your own research. Uh, the one thing I do wanna say is always do your research. You can hear what I'm saying, but I want you to be able to research for yourself. Read, learn, educate yourself. So educating ourselves is gonna be uh, a big priority of mine on this page because I just want us all to be safe. I want us all to be healthy and I want us to grow together. Just educate yourself. I'd rather you be well educated and not hear from somebody else or guess. Make sure that you guys are educating yourselves. Don't just listen to what I'm saying. Don't listen to just what your friend's saying. Educate yourself. But it's like, what research? If people researched scientific, peer-reviewed studies on essential oils... One poll found that a third of Americans believe in the health benefits of essential oils and aromatherapy. No longer niche, these little vials of plant essence are a billion-dollar industry, favored by Gwyneth Paltrow and grandmas alike. But there's a problem with essential oil claims. Science hasn't caught up to their popularity. There simply hasn't been enough large-scale peer-reviewed studies to prove whether essential oils really can improve health or mood. It can be tough for consumers to know what they're really buying. The market isn't regulated, so there tends to be a lot of variation between essential oils, even among those that originate from the same brand. Another important thing to keep in mind is that essential oils haven't been put through rigorous FDA testing and approval, like the over-the-counter drugs available at your neighborhood pharmacy. So what essential oils do for health, if anything, is still pretty murky. Essential oils are neither medicines nor drugs because the effects have not been fully assessed yet in terms of science, said Hideki Kashiwandani. I'm so sorry, I probably pronounced that wrong a physiology researcher at Kagoshima University in Japan, in an email to Discover. Despite this, essential oils have a wide appeal, particularly among people who have grown dissatisfied with modern Western medicine, and this alternative therapy is showing no signs of slowing down. We must also remember that correlation does not equal causation. In other words, a mere association between two things isn't enough to prove a direct cause and effect relationship. So even if a study found people who smelled lavender aroma felt less anxious, something else may be responsible for the effect, such as controlled breathing. On top of that, the results from scientific studies can sometimes be misinterpreted or blown out of proportion. When scientists study treatments, they're looking for changes that are statistically significant. All this means is that the results cannot be explained by random chance alone. So the impact of an essential oil might be scientifically significant, but fall far short of what we might view as meaningful. In light of the shortcomings of essential oil studies, a lot of information concerning their benefits tends to be anecdotal or rooted in folklore, and their safety hasn't been fully vetted. So it's important for people to remember that natural or organic doesn't directly translate to being safe or beneficial. Plant compounds, especially in high doses, can be toxic, irritating, or may cause allergic reactions or drug interactions. To sum it up, essential oils may work for you, but there's no conclusion that they are universally beneficial 
or that they should be recommended to a broad amount of people. If you enjoy it and feel like it has benefits to your life, you have every right to believe that. But I do think that conversations around essential oils and recommendations of essential oils should also mention the potential harm of essential oils on the individual, especially since they haven't been broadly studied and especially when you have a large audience that you're recommending use essential oils. That's the research, but if research is going onto a Facebook page or Young Living's website, or just looking at your Instagram, that's a very different level of research with very different information presented. $200 for something this size at your dermatologist's office. And I'm sure it works, but it's probably loaded with toxins. Um, I was doing a whole bunch of research and some of my favorite moisturizers that I used to use all the time that, you know what, they worked, but I didn't realize how they were affecting the rest of my body. So basically all these moisturizers nowadays, uh, well not nowadays, all these moisturizers from the past and still today um, are loaded with parabens. And I used to not care about any of that stuff, but I wasn't educated on it at all. And basically parabens, they disrupt your hormones. Um, they just really mess up your body. It's sad because she's influencing people to purchase and use these oils, but it's not like she has any sort of qualifications or reason to be recommending the oils. So overall, Alexa Vega is very goopy. I think that's kind of the conclusion of this entire thing. Is she's very gloopy, gloopy. She's very goopy, but she's also just not disclosing her affiliation and that's a little bit upsetting. A lot of this has a lot to do with influencer marketing. At the end of the day, celebrities have influence. Influencers have influence. And what you do with that influence matters. That's why disclosure of affiliations is so important because people need to know whether you're recommending something just out of a genuine nature or if you're being paid to do so. They say a lot of, you know, join us, come join us. Uh, sign up, join sign up, join our team. It's really, join really fun. Our team, let's go. And if you are using your sphere of influence to recruit people into a company where they might not make money just for the purpose of you making money and profiting off of the people that are following you, I think that can be generally agreed upon that that's just overall a really crummy thing to do. But anyways, that's all I have to say on this topic. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, uh, until next time, have a good one.